two more players. No, one in the college. You're going to call it everybody in the college. You have to stay on that then. You've got to stay until full time. Or until you're 18. So, who knows what they're going to do when they leave school? It's your hand. Ready? You. Two. What are you going to do? I call out the, um, an engineer. An engineer? Well, send them to you, that mechanical engineer. Yeah. Is that it? Dan, yeah, put it in, uh, in Granada University. It's good, it's hard work. Yeah. What's your subject, same thing? Um, it's construction and... Uh, I'm not sure what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, stage fright, I get that. I might do it. I'll go through this. So what, what are you doing with engineering school? Um, I'm a motor vehicle mechanic. Motor mechanic. Motor sport mechanic or firefighter. That's pretty good. My son went to be... Whatever so he is a policeman. Mm -hmm. He went to on um, a course for um this course at college, um Public well, Services. Public services. Mm -hmm. he, he done that, mm -hmm. that's how he started. So he didn't do brilliant at school, but he did not got a couple of GCSEs. Mm -hmm. Then he went on to public services and just couldn't call him. He was two years behind that at school when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And we just sent him to Ex for Lessons for that. And that's for teacher and he caught up for two years and now he's a uh, a fully fledged policeman in Milton Keynes. Okay, so. So, all right, I'll start the talk. I'll say you. Do we know who I am? No? Well, I'll, I'll say who I am. I'm Dave Earl. Right, and I open a, I open a boxing club. This is Rob Evans, and he, he's like the same boxing club. He's our most um, successful boxer. Okay, so he's a, a few times national champion. We'll get onto that later through my talk. Um, now, I do a lot of reading and writing, so but when I first started uh, doing the reading and writing, because really, because I, I didn't feel clever enough, so I get in conversations with people and I feel stupid because they use words that I, I didn't understand. So I, so I thought, well, I'll start reading just so I understand. And just by reading books, it's a word of my vocabulary, so I, I felt like, you know, I could have a conversation with anybody. All right, so I, I was from um, a council estate. Um, as a kid in Coventry, which is a bit well. In all honesty, I, I have heard people talk about me going to council and they've been off the state. I've never really got involved in any at all. Not some people. I, I, just, uh, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just kept my nose clean and kept quiet. Did rubbish at school and primary school over there. I had no uh, really push through school. But I just um, um, came to Banbury. My mum lived here. And that's all I was brought up by my dad. And just uh, and ended up here um, with no qualifications. I had a GCSE in, not GCSE, I was too old for that, O level in art. And that's all I left school with. And what that meant was by leaving school with um, an O level in art, my options were very limited to what I, was, I could do. So if you leave, you know, if you leave school with nothing, then you end up taking the jobs that you, you can take. So I spent um, 20 years, just 20 years doing stuff I didn't want to do. So I'll come on to it in a minute. In a minute. So, um, I'm going to just blow with it with this. Uh, so, despite being, so despite being born, what I think, I don't know what, where you are with your studies, all of it, but it, I think if you, um, let me just start there, it's fine. Right. Camera. Camera action. Is that camera still on me? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, that's mean. <laughs> So that's sort of the first bit of the so. Okay, so I, I, I always think if you're, like I felt I was born at a disadvantage. So when I, um, when I left school, I couldn't really do anything. And I always, what I made, I made other people's opinion of me become my reality. So if people thought I was stupid, then I, I believed I was stupid sort of thing. So I never really went for anything, never challenged anything to become anything. And the only thing that I was any good at was boxing. Because my dad was a boxer. And I thought, well, I'll just do the same as my dad. He was a boxer. I knew I wouldn't get too far sort of education because I didn't feel clever enough. So I just would follow my dad. And I thought, as long as I do, my dad was, um, he was, uh, he fought, I don't know if you heard of Henry Cooper. Henry Cooper, uh, the older people were, or slightly older. <laughs> but, uh, Henry Cooper was uh, the, the, the best heavyweight England ever had. He got knocked out by Muhammad Ali. That's his claim to fame, getting knocked out by Muhammad Ali. He was obviously the best boxer. So so that was my life. My life, I was going to be a boxer, and then I didn't really realise how much um, work it took to be a, a champion of the world. 
So um, by that time, I didn't, all my studies had failed me. So I ended up doing, um, doing jobs that I was qualified for. So at this stage in your life, everything's ahead of you. And if you, if you mess it up now, right, then that's going to carry on through that life. You, if you decide, it, it doesn't even mean that you have to, um, it doesn't mean that you have to know what you're doing in the future, because most people at your age won't. But what it does mean is that what you do choose to do, you need to make sure you do it properly. Because most of us just, just um, we, 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 we wait for something to come along and we do it, especially with no qualifications. So I spent 20 years doing factory jobs. Didn't like one of them. And I spent most of my 20 years looking at the clock, hoping, wait, waiting for the day to finish. And that's where it goes if you've got no confidence and you just get stuck where you are because you get to rely on the money. So it's saying you're stuck with the money, you're stuck with the job. So I had 20 years looking at the job and um, wondering when, you know, wondering when the day was going to finish, wondering if the, the company was going to shut down if I still had a job. And, and I was sat at the chocolate factory. The chocolate factory I used to sit on the end of the machine and just watch the, the chocolates fall off the machine, put them in a bag, put in the machine, seal, seal the bag and put it on the pallet. And that was what was done all day, eight hours a day, sometimes 12 hour shifts. I was waking up before the, um, the milkman when I was on six or two. And get, you know, because I was knackered, knackered all the time. So I never had a job that I really, I really enjoyed until I decided to do what I wanted to do. And by this time, I was 40 years old. So that's a long time to go. But I, people say, well, would you change anything? Yeah, well, what's up with that? I worked hard at school. And I wouldn't have waited 20 years just sat, sat in factories where I didn't want to be. I got sat so many times, but I'm just not. Tell me, like, when you leave school, you'll regret it, and it's the best day, you, uh, best times of your life, and you have to do But as soon as you do get out there to the real world, uh, you wish you could stay in school. Trust me. I'll tell you what highlight I did one day. Um, I was walking, I was walking down the um, the street, um, down Parsons Street in Banbury, in, in this day. This is like about people and their opportunities. 